Howdy, it's Chad. Uh, today I wanted to discuss, uh, let's see, enhancing your cognitive abilities. This is a subject that has intrigued me for quite some time and here recently I've been taking many steps to um, see if I can help uh, increase my brain's performance. Uh, a lot of th there's a bunch of things that I'm playing around with, but I'm going to before I go and talk about them on video specifically from an anecdotal standpoint. I want to at least test them for a month or two, but some things that um, will help. I mean, immediately people want to just take something because they did it's you know it's like the uh, the movie Limitless. You just want to take something and bam, your brain's gonna work and there are some means to do that to some extent but uh, they're probably not the safest thing to play around with so things that are safe and uh, some of them will cost you no money is the first thing that you can do to uh, boost your uh, cognitive abilities is get more sleep yes if you're underslept then you know your brain will not fire correctly um, another thing that uh, I've found that has helped me out a lot here recently is I've upped my fat intake and it's uh, my my brain it's wacky how much better it works you know when I was on a straight fruit diet um, it's you know I was hoping that my you know my my abilities my cognitive abilities would uh, get better because of uh, you know cleaner eating easier to digest but I've found that uh, through introducing more fat into my diet it's made a world of difference in my mood stability and in just cloudiness I don't find myself having to reach for words all the time and you know saying um and, uh, and things like that it's it's pretty pretty wild and I mean just just looking at it from a basic standpoint is see you have what is called myelin or you have your myelin sheath in your brain which myelination it's essentially like an insulation around a wire so the stronger your myelination is the easier your brain will be able to fire off just in simple terms and your brain is made of fat now your body can convert things but I am currently at the belief between, you know, from my anecdotal, for whatever that's worth, just saying that yes, it's helped me, the consumption of fat has helped my uh, brain function, but also from just with scientific studies, you're, it's to, to try to increase myelination without fat consumption is to me like trying to build a house out of twigs but that's just my take uh, this another thing that will help with uh, cognitive abilities big time is eating cleaner food now uh, I'm going to do a whole bunch of videos about uh, mycotoxins I've already done a few but essentially mycotoxins are mold uh, molds that are in our food and it can it can be in anything it doesn't matter what type of dietary guidelines that you follow it doesn't matter if you're standard American diet or you're a raw foodist both are very very susceptible to these uh, molds in fact one of the biggest things that these molds exist in is bananas so and for through doing the tests that I've done on myself once again we're going back to anecdotal things but I've actually um, taking the time to eat certain foods on an empty stomach and just to see what happens and uh, I seem to be pretty susceptible to molds and things that happen almost immediately and by immediate I'll say within a half hour or so is that the inflammation in my hands and or my feet starts up and immediately with that follows increased brain fog and just feeling almost out there and see when I was completely on a raw food diet you know following a fruitarian diet I always wrote it off as oh I'm detoxing but I've through what I've been playing around with that doesn't seem to be the case it's actually I seem to be having a reaction to mold so uh, that is um, that's another video for another time but anyway so trying to source uh, clean food and uh, the next thing that I have also been experimenting with is uh, I've been taking a vitamin D3 supplement now uh, you know some would say that it's not the best thing to supplement with anything I I beg to differ because I 
live in a cold climate and even if I were to spend all day out in the sun which I don't have the ability to do the likelihood that I would be able to get enough sun to produce enough vitamin D3 in my body or we'll just say vitamin D in my body it's probably very unlikely uh, vitamin D3 supplementation is very safe from what I've from the information that I've sifted through and it's it's one it's almost one of the hardest vitamins to OD on we'll say yes it is a fat soluble I get that but you know the uh, the standard um, the recommended dosage is a thousand inter you know I use or international units per 25 pounds of body weight now you can just go and get a vitamin D3 test. It's the uh, 25 hydroxy vitamin D test. So you can just, you know, talk to your doctor or whatever. I'm at some point uh, when I get the time to, I'm just going to get a full spectrum, um, you know, full panel for my blood work because I just want to see what's going on in my body. So, anyways, uh, the next thing that has that I've, I of course I love is inversion. Now a lot of people. Uh, they can have brain fog or impaired ability due to uh, lack of oxygen, lack of circulation to the brain. Now, the only way to completely test this is you, I believe you'd have to have a real-time spec test, which isn't cheap, and I mean, I'm not going to go get one, but I just like hanging upside down. <laughs> don't know why but I enjoy it so you know doing handstands doing uh, headstands I'll make a video on doing headstands maybe tomorrow and uh, also using an inversion table those those I especially I like doing uh, the inversion table about 15 20 minutes before I go to bed and it seems to help me fall asleep a lot quicker and seems to make me wake up more rested so once again more blood flow to the head plus better rest equals better cognitive abilities uh, lastly on the list I mean if you if you wish to take things things like ginkgo uh, skull cap, uh, got you cola and rosemary. I love rosemary, even if it does absolutely nothing for my head. It's I've been mixing. Uh, I drink gynostemma tea from time to time, and I'll just take some fresh rosemary and put it in there with the tea, and it just kind of gives it a nice taste. But I mean, you can buy a rosemary plant for next to nothing, and you can use it for months and months on end, and it's a very very hardy plant. So, those are just some things that I've played around with and continuing to play around with and, you know, uh, of anything on, the, on all of that, uh, the list that I just gave off, the most important things to me right now and probably the simplest are your sleep and your fat intake. And through fat intake, um, my suggestions would be uh, coconut oil which that would be number one but make sure to get clean organic coconut oil and with uh, that unfortunately that's another product that can have mycotoxins in it but I'll have to just cover that in another video uh, so it's the fat intake and the get sleep and also if you're not following a um, if you're not following a vegan diet or you're not opposed to consumption of animal products I would suggest either grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee now specifically grass-fed because it has a um, higher content of CLA which is conjugated linole linoleic acid which helps with many many things in your body and another important thing with if you're using especially with the the butter or the ghee is don't heat it I just when I do use it I put it on top of food after everything is all done because uh, it doesn't have a very high smoking point so once you once you burn or once you get it past that cooking point you've now screwed up the molecular structure and your body doesn't like it and it'll actually be detrimental to you essentially like plastic in your veins so that is what I do and we'll continue to play around with have any questions comments post them down below uh, subscribe like share and I'll see you later take it easy